Good morning, make it yourselfers, or whatever time it is, wherever you are, I hope you're having a really great day. And a happy 2023, as I haven't been posting a lot lately, many of you have been asking, what's up, what's going on, uh, if I'm okay, and actually I am doing very well. After a bout of having quite a bit of brain fog and just not feeling well last year and I'd like to explain a little bit about what I've been doing and how it's been working out for me now today is let's see what's the date today the 21st of January and I have tried to begin this video several times and then I put off publishing it and then other things happened, so then I wanted to put it all together. But um, I was gonna show you what happened after trying a month of the carnivore diet. So I decided to try it. I am going to try out the carnivore diet. I've been doing this now for a bit over two weeks. And um, uh, then it ended up been two or three months and now I'm going on almost four months so yes I started a carnivore lifestyle in September on September 28th of last year Wednesday September 28th was just some day just some Wednesday I'm like you know what what the heck I'm gonna try this I had seen several videos and I thought it would be a great way to do what I considered to be an elimination diet and a bit of an experiment just because I had been having a lot more issues lately I had more eczema on my lower my especially my right ankle um, I've, you know, for years I've had numerous urinary tract infections and a few other things like Bartholin cysts and just certain weird things. But what was bothering me the most lately was the fact that I had a lot of mental fog. And I thought it was in part due to a reaction to just everything going on in the world around us. I wasn't happy with a lot of things going on and I thought it was just the anxiety or the stress or just my inability to deal with things that were going on that were bothering me and that wouldn't allow me to get back to work and doing what I love to do. And you know I love making natural products and I love sharing them with you. And in a lot of cases, there were days that I had the energy and the mental clarity to come up with recipes and make things and I would even record them. And then I just couldn't get around to actually getting them up online. Something that was so simple for me to do for so many years was becoming a chore and something very difficult to do and you know I started this blog as a hobby and as a labor of love and just something I love to do anyway I've decided to try the carnivore diet because my assumption was that something in my diet no matter how hard I tried to eat as healthy as possible just wasn't working Something was not going right in my, you know, celery and almond butter and matcha and chia seeds and whatever diet that I was eating at the time. So I figured with a pass of having, you know, been almost vegan for a while, vegetarian for quite a while uh, in college for several years, uh, which was the, actually the worst for me. Um, just, you know, paleo for a while, gaps for a while. I just, I wasn't finding what would work for me. And I wasn't quite sure what the problem was. So I figured, why not? I mean, why not try the carnivore 
diet for a while and just see what happens. And I didn't go in with huge hope for it, to be honest. Um, I was quite skeptical. And, um, you know, I, I planned to only do this for about a month. And so I started and the first week I felt amazing and um, I was really surprised. There were times that I would have cravings for the nuts and seeds and things that I had grown so fond of and they were my go-to snacks. And so I had to find new go-to snacks and uh, we could talk a little bit about what I have been eating but I just wanted to give you a quick overview on what the last four months have been like because from this video, there's a few other topics of things that I've learned that I really wanna share with you. So uh, yeah, what have I been eating? Now, if you're not familiar with the carnivore diet, basically it's what it sounds like, you eat animal products. There's a subset of the diet um, called the lion's diet, which is a term that was coined by Michaela Peterson, who found that she was able to greatly reduce all of the symptoms of her autoimmune problems. You know, she grew up with rheumatoid arthritis and other issues and ended up finding that the only thing that really helped her uh, achieve pretty much she looks like she's enjoying a very normal life apart from this what seemingly uh, not normal diet of ruminant meat like beef and bison and lamb and salt and then water and that's all she eats uh, and then there's other people with the carnivore that basically allow anything that comes from an animal uh, generally, uh, they discard honey from bees because of the sugar content. What they want is to have a very low carb uh, diet. So most will include obviously ruminant meats, other meats like pork, um, you know, any type of poultry, fish, seafood. Uh, some people allow and some people don't allow dairy. And within dairy, some people are a lot more permissive. Others are very strict about what dairy they'll allow. They will have fermented dairy or just butter because of its high fat content or only raw milk. Some feel better with raw milk, others don't. And others don't think that adults should have milk at all, whether it be raw or pasteurized. And of course, you know, there are always going to be these discussions and within a community of people who are following a certain similar type of diet lifestyle. Now, um, you may notice from my blog that I have a lot of dairy-free recipes, a lot of gluten-free recipes, and that was because trying to figure out my digestive and skin issues, I tried a lot of different diets. I was trying to eliminate a lot of things. You'll even find um, recipes for the anti-Canada diet, which I tried for a while. Through my experimentation, I thought that dairy was probably actually what bothered me the most. And I have since found that I can tolerate very well dairy when I am following the carnivore diet. Before, if I had just a bit of cheese or, uh, you know, a sip of milk, I would be on my side with uh, severe stomach cramping. And now I can have quite a bit of cheese, actually, quite a bit of heavy cream and quite a bit of butter without any issues at all. I can get into that in another video because it goes along with something else I want to talk to you about and one of the main things that I thought was a problem with my diet before. But for today, I just wanted to let you know what I've been up to. Um, I have been eating quite a bit of variety of animal foods. I've been eating a lot of fish and steak. I've been especially concentrating on ruminant meat, a lot of beef, 
Uh, I have had some anchovies, some wild caught smoked salmon, and some of these other fishes that have been appealing to me a lot more lately. I don't know if that's intuitive for hormonal regulation or what, but um, I've been very intuitive about what I've wanted. I have had quite a bit of fat in the in butter. I've had eggs when my hens have been laying them and just a wide variety. Now I have had a few non-animal based, mostly beverages. Um, I have allowed myself occasionally coffee. I'm not a big coffee drinker. But if I'm out in a social setting and everybody is ordering coffee, I have had coffee. Um, at home, I have been finishing up a big stack of teas and herbal teas. I, have, um, I haven't been having my usual matcha, but one of the reasons that I have been sticking with the herbal teas too and the tea is I realized partly through this journey that I had a problem with oxalates. And it's not a good idea to jump from a really high oxalate diet like the one I was eating to one that's completely zero. So while I haven't been wanting to have very many foods that are, um, you know, even moderate in oxalates, I figured, you know, something like this is an herbal tea that has a bit of black pepper in it. It has a little bit of cinnamon. Uh, some of these others or even just an occasional bag of brewed tea uh, they can help just have me have a little bit of oxalate coming in so that my body doesn't try to dump it all at once I have had problems with oxalate dumping which I will go into in another video and explain why what that's about and I've actually been reading a really great book I just finished it called Toxic Superfoods by Sally Norton and um, I've been communicating with her publisher and I'm going to try to get in an interview with her here on my YouTube channel because I think this is something that's greatly overlooked especially in the paleo community and where some of these healthy food communities where we're getting in a lot of very high oxalate foods and we don't realize it nor do we realize the extent of the problem i was aware of oxalate issues but i thought it only dealt with kidney stones and basically was from eating too much spinach and I have since learned the hard way that there's a lot more to it than that. So other than my animal foods on the weekend, I have allowed myself some wine with dinner when we go out or lunch, if we go out with people and we're having wine. Other than that, um, I've been very good about not eating anything else. Now, if there is a garnish on the plate, I generally leave it, although I have picked at a few pieces of non-high oxalate <laughs> vegetables occasionally on the weekend, but very rarely and in small amounts, a little bit of zucchini um, and not much else. And at times, they people have said, oh, you have to try this dessert. So I will take the tiniest, little spoonful of it and I have to say that I have found after eliminating all sugars and um, you know just trying just the tiniest little bite of a dessert absolutely grosses me out I can't handle it and that's actually been one of the most surprising things for me it's just like I want to spit it out it just tastes so incredibly grossly sweet that I can't deal with it anymore. So, uh, <laughs> which is good because there were times when I would have cravings for sweets and that's one of the, the biggest benefits I see to eating this way. So I don't want to make this video extremely long. I just want to go through some of the benefits I've seen and um, why I think this is actually 
a good thing to try if you are somebody who thinks you're eating healthy and you're not seeing the results you'd like to see. Let me tell you some of the benefits I've had over the last four months, which have made my one month experiment turn into four. Uh, one, my skin. My skin has completely cleared up. I will very, very occasionally, and this is generally on the weekend uh, when I go off a little bit, or if um, I am right at that point before my period in my cycle. I will occasionally get, oh, here I think I have one here. I will occasionally get maybe one pimple. <laughs> something that I've struggled with since I was 12 um, and they put me on all sorts of medications for it and I've been dealing it with it since and I'm 48 now you would think by now that it would have resolved but no uh, no matter what I ate I was still struggling with acne and you know they had me on retin-a they even put me on continual uh, antibiotics for a while. I was on um, tetracycline continuously for years, which is crazy. If I knew what I knew now, of course, I would have never gone along with that. But at the time, you know, a doctor told you that and you listened and you didn't have the internet to fall back on to find information. So apart from that, they even tried giving me the pill for several years without taking the break. Uh, normally when you take the, the pill, you take several weeks of the active ingredient and then you either stop for a week or you take these pills that have absolutely nothing in them or I don't know, you know, they're placebo pills or... and they had me skip those. So I was taking them nonstop and I was not getting my quote unquote period or the, you know, the bloodshed that you get when you are on the pill. That was in essence to keep me from having premenstrual syndrome uh, symptoms, you know, like acne and uh, my nails would peel and I just overall felt horrible. So, of course, that was just, it seemed miraculous at the time until I realized how horrible <laughs> that was for my body. So, uh, luckily, I stopped that relatively sooner than later. Uh, that could have gone on much longer and could have maybe caused me more permanent issues. But, um, so yeah, my skin has cleared up. I have uh, my eczema on my ankle has almost completely gone away. It comes back a few little bumps here and there when I'm going through episodes of oxalate dumping, which I will explain more in another video. But the majority of it has completely gone away uh, when it does come back, it only comes back for a, a day or two, and it's just a very small amount. And then, unless I've scratched through it and uh, caused myself bleeding, it goes away right away. So that is amazing. That has been one of my biggest struggles for years. It keeps me, it kept me up at night, which it hasn't in the last months at all. Other symptoms have greatly improved since I have been eating this way are actually surprisingly was a toenail that I had that had toenail fungus which I have had this nail in this state for over 10 years now and I would occasionally cut at it and try to cut out the damaged parts and I wasn't doing a lot more than that and uh, there were times when I would try different liquids that you could put on it. I tried oregano oil. I tried a bunch of different things that didn't seem to be working. And I was basically ignoring it. And interestingly enough, uh, I noticed the other day when I decided to do a foot soak and a pedicure 
that that nail was growing in healthy now without having done anything else. I hadn't been cleaning it. I hadn't been scratching at it. I hadn't been cutting out anything. I hadn't done absolutely anything. The only thing that I did was this change in diet. And uh, I was actually quite amazed. So I'm just gonna continue to monitor it and hopefully my nail will grow in healthy this year and I will be very happy about that. Uh, other improvements have been improvements to my sleep. I was finding that especially towards the end of my cycle, I was having problems with insomnia and just wasn't sleeping well. Uh, that has mostly cleared up in the last few months uh, eating this way. And probably the greatest improvement has just been the way I feel. I just have a lot more energy. I have a lot more mental clarity. And I have been wanting to get back into vlogging and sharing more recipes and things with you, which I will be doing. And the only thing that has kept me from doing that is this extra energy I've had. I have been doing a deep cleaning of our house and I've really been wanting to do this for so long. And I'm so afraid that if my energy goes away, I won't get through it all. So the only thing that has really been kept keeping me from continuing to blog more is the fact that I have been going through and just trying to organize everything at home. Something that, this is gonna sound crazy, but my mental fog, just I felt like I didn't have the energy or the mental clarity to even make decisions about what things I wanted to keep, where to put them. It was just like a major energy drain for me and something that I have been able to do finally. So look forward to more posts and more things in the future. Overall, that's my main message for today. Four months of the carnivore diet, I'm feeling great. Uh, the, um, the only thing that I haven't completely loved is the, the social implications of it. When you go out with people, they look at you kind of strangely, but you get over it. You get used to it and you just say, look, I'm, you know, I'm healing my body. Do I think I will stay on carnivore for forever? I don't know. Um, it wasn't going to last this long. This experiment was only going to be a month. For now, I want to continue to heal my body in the best way possible. Does that mean I don't think I won't start adding in some fruits and some vegetables that are low oxalate? Um, it's likely I will add those back into my diet at some point, but for now, I'm feeling great with what I'm doing and I'm going to continue this way. So I just wanted to let you know so that you can look forward to new videos for my blog and so that you would know what I have been up to over the last, actually over a year now that I haven't been posting. Before I sign off, I did want to just quick mention something about weight. Now, a lot of people choose to do the carnivore diet because they want to lose weight. And when I started this on September 28th, I weighed 144 pounds. Uh, this morning, although I am about to get my period, but I was at 145.7 <clears throat> 145. pounds. So be aware, not everybody necessarily loses weight on carnivore, especially not right away. Now I did lose a few pounds in the beginning and I put those back on and I've been pretty much maintaining around the same weight for a while. What I will say is my clothes have been fitting quite a bit better and I just feel better in general. So for me right now, this isn't an issue. Um, if it starts to bother me in the new year, I will probably play around with some intermittent fasting along with the diet because uh, I had been intermittent fasting before I started. And we'll just say that I have been eating more often, have been eating more, and I have been maintaining around the same weight and just feel better and feel like I look better in general. So for me, weight loss at this point isn't an issue, although I would like to lose a few pounds. Um, and I have incorporated weight training in again and walking. And just, you know, as my energy improves, I've been getting in more exercise. So I figured I should quickly touch on that. But um, overall, I've been feeling great and 
yeah, looking forward to getting new videos out soon. So I hope you guys are having a great day and talk soon.